Um, we are in Psalms. Talked, went through Psalm 19 last week. We talked about um, many different things, but let's see how many of them you remember. Jared. Thank you, Jerry. Yes, details? Well, I was going to say four, but... No, go ahead. Uh, that the fear of the Lord is a good, proper thing. Yes, it is, it, is, it, is the, it is the place from which all knowledge and wisdom springs, is a, is a healthy fear of the one who created you. <laughs> Anybody else? I mm-hmm. I didn't think about that, but yeah, I, I guess the the Lord did use the 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 heavens as an example to Abraham, and uh, um, in addition to being a timepiece, the, the 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 stars and the planets and the sun and all that stuff is uh, is is something for us to behold, to be in awe of. But um, a lot of ancient peoples just, they, they did all those things, but they thought that they were gods. Why do you think so many of our planets share names with Roman deities? Um, is because they, they looked on these things and, and, and thought that, well, they must be from a place of great power. And, and they were, just they didn't identify the correct source. Um, the, um, we talked about that. Anybody, anybody else? True. How it converts our soul, not in necessarily a salvific sense, but more so in a sanctifying way, where we see God's law, His standard of righteousness and holiness, and through the power of the Spirit, He conforms us to keep that law. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Anyone else? And that wraps 19. We're actually making forward progress. Psalm 18 and inclement weather kept us bogged for a month, but we, we press further into the book. On to chapter 20. Chapter 20 is interesting because chapter 20 is largely a prayer or an example of a type of prayer for uh, the people of Israel. It is uh, in addition to having a lot of praise and stuff, stuff, uh, things that we have identified uh, with Psalms before, uh, it is largely a, um, a prayer for aid for David and also encouragement for David. It is also there, there, there's some there's some interesting things here that uh, can be brought out, and some things I think that we can glean some understanding from. I am I'm going to begin reading, and I'm not sure if we're going to read all this and then go th- all the way through it and then come back to it, or if we're going to go verse by verse. I just haven't decided yet, and we'll go do it in the moment. But um, uh, let's do um, Psalm chapter 20 in the first verse. The Lord. Hear thee in the day of trouble, the name of the Lord, uh, the name of the God of, of Jacob, defend thee. Now, um, the superscription with um, Psalm 20 is to the chief musician, a psalm of David. Now, there are a lot of people do, uh, obviously, and I would too, because the Bible says that it was, it was a psalm of David, but there are some people that say that this did not come along until the days of Jehoshaphat. Now, Again, who knows? I think because it says a psalm of David here, that David was probably the author. It, it, even if even if it did wait until the time of Jehoshaphat to come to become publicly used, um, David was probably the author here. And he says, the, "The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee." Now this is in an odd, um, almost third person. Uh, way of writing. He, it, it is, it is a a entity, and specifically the people of Israel speaking about David to God. So it says, "The the, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble, and the name and and in the name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary, and strengthen thee out of Zion." Now uh, there praying for David's uh, sure safety. And I actually read somewhere that this was, um, that this could have been a, um, a battle chant 
as they were marching into into war when 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 it, when kings would go out to battle this is this is the this is the song this is the this is the 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 uh the uh the prayer that they would pray as they went into battle and a lot of this is focused on this leader fact of the business and we'll go ahead and just jump straight to the end of the psalm if you'll read it uh, verse 9 says, Save, Lord, let the king hear us all when we call. So this is specifically the people of Israel uh, praying for David. Now it says that, uh, uh, verse 2 says, Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Now, not only did they want the Lord to hear David's word, not, they were also implying to that David was doing some praying. It says, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. So not only are they praying for David, they're expecting David to also be praying for himself. Now we talk a lot about prayer, and we talk about modes of prayer, and who, she, who you should pray for, and what you should be praying for, but oftentimes we don't talk enough about praying for ourselves. You are, you, you are respons... You're a little thunder there. Um, you are, re, uh, are responsible for yourself and and your and, and maintaining yourself in personal prayer just as much as I, I should pray for brother Larry as the pastor I should pray for uh, 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 brother Jerry I should pray for brother Kenny I should pray for brother Junior and, and and all the people of the church that we should be praying for each other it is just as much your responsibility to pray for yourself and they call on God to be able to hear them when they request for help more than that though verse verse 2 enhances this and makes this uh, more powerful and more personal. It says, uh, uh, "Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion." Now, Zion, as we all know, is Mount Zion, which was form formerly a Jebusite fortress and became a um, the city of Jerusalem. Specifically, Mount Zion is the Temple Mount, and he says he calls for aid out of the sanctuary and. Out of Zion, I think specifically, especially when you couple it earlier in the, earlier in the verse with uh, help from the sanctuary, he's calling for aid from the actual seat of God's power, from the temple itself, from the tabernacle itself. Now, if this was written in David's time, it of course would be a tabernacle, but uh, the the Temple Mount is where Solomon's temple would stand. It is the place that David prepped. As the place, this is where God came to meet with His people. When D Solomon dedicated the temple, God moved on that place. Now, is God bound by four walls? We know that He is not. Right. Uh, we know that, that we know that there, even in this very nice facility that we stand every Sunday and Wednesday and get to worship and praise God inside of, there is no power in this location, but dedicating a place for the Lord is a time-honored tradition, if you will. And, and, and honestly, God called. God told Moses to make the tabernacle. David desired to build a temple, and he just had too bloody a hands to be able to pull that off. Solomon poured wealth into it. And, and really from Solomon's days on, the, uh, the re-attempts at producing a temple never reached quite that grandeur again, but always they were looking for a place. And so when we call for, when, when we're looking for aid, when we need aid, this is a place where you can be reinforced. Why is it important to go to church? That's not me. I'm not going to answer my own question. I'm going to actually ask y'all, why is it important to go to church? This should be an easy one for y'all to come up with. It's nourished. Nourishment. Why else? Fellowship. God can, God can meet. The Spirit often moves in the gathering of God's people. What else? We're commanded to. The, the reinforcement, the safety of being in this place is not to be minimized. We can we can often, and I think has been in the past, minimize location as just, well, it's just four walls. But it's so much more than that. I, Brother Larry, I think it was a Sunday or two ago, I, with re-uploading all this stuff, sometimes I get confused on what day I'm on or what week I'm on, but uh, he talked about uh, the Amish people, that some of them meet from house to house, and they dedicate a space 
on the day. They'll move their furniture aside and they will set it up just so-so to have church services and they'll dedicate a space. This act of dedication, it sanctifies a place. It, it, it sets it apart. And so when they're saying, not only do we want the Lord to hear you in the day of trouble, we want Him to come from the seat of His power, from, a, from, from, from the place, and we want Him to pour the blessings out of that place. We want, him, we want Him to come from where He is most felt, from, where, from the place where, he, where, where, where his, nourish, his nourishment is most, is most provided, from where fellowship is, 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 a, is a key place, and we want Him to pour the blessings out from that place. The problem is, if you don't show up, how are you going to gain those blessings? It is vitally important. And, and, and it's one of those truths that, and, and I know if you look at it in context, um, for sake not the assembling of themselves together doesn't necessarily hold up to scrutiny with the rest of the book and the rest of the chapter, but it is a good, it is a, it, there is plenty of other scripture that indicates, and in fact, my favorite is, is you, I forget which gospel it is, but it said that, it said that it was Jesus' custom to visit the temple on the days that he was supposed to. We're supposed to be Christians. We're supposed to be here when the doors are open. It, it's not a hard thing, and, and, and it, 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 is a, it, is, it, it is simplicity at its very, uh, it is, it is very uh, a core, and yet, uh, and so much to be gained here. And yet we, we sometimes turn away from it as just, uh, well, that's just an activity. I can meet with God anywhere. I'm, yeah, I'm sure you can. I, I have met with God outside of the church building. It is possible. But I'm never going to meet, you, you, hey, guess where I was saved? In a church. Yeah. Guess where I've received some of my greatest blessings? In a church. You cannot minimize this place as just, well, that's just a location. You can meet with God anywhere. You can meet with God on a hillside, and yes, you can. A lot of pe- There's scripture about people meeting with God on hillsides. But this sanctified and set apart place is the fortress, if you will. This, this is the place where we say that God begins here and no evil shall trespass. That this place is set aside and sanctified. We're going to put out all other things and one thing shall be at the center. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice, Selah. Now, he takes this idea about the temple and what happened at the temple most often, or the tabernacle. That was a place of sacrifice. Sacrifices were extremely important to Jewish worship. They played vital roles in, in, the, in the, uh, the staying of punishment, the staying of sin, in old Jewish law. Specifically, though, he goes and he says, Remember all thy offerings. So these are all the things that David had done. And then he singles out one type of sacrifice, and it was the burnt offering. Now, I'm not going to call on who remembers about burnt offerings, but I bet I could name one person in this room who, at the beginning of his uh, uh, 13-week examination, could tell us some stuff about burnt offerings. In fact, in Leviticus chapter 1, an idea of burnt offerings is laid out, and one of the, the key factors is it was a male without blemish, and placing your hand upon his head provided atonement for the sacrificer. So singling out the burnt sacrifice, this, they are calling upon God not only to remember all the good works that we do, and we do do some good works. I think Brother, Larry, uh, Brother Jarrett in his sermon uh, uh, called out uh, that uh, different things that are being done in the church. And we all do good works, but singling out this burnt sacrifice is, is much, they're calling upon God, and I think the burnt sacrifice is the greatest example of Jesus' sacrifice, the ultimate fulfillment of good works, the atonement, if you will. So remember all the good things, calling upon God to remember all the good things they've done, but not only that, but the sacrifice that makes all of it worth it. The one thing that, you, that, that, that has been done in history that makes anything that we can do worthwhile even doing. Because the Bible says the blood of bulls and goats would not, sac- would not suffice. But one person did it all. And, 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 and I think, it, especially in the time frame, in the scope 
of the Psalms, the scope of the of the time period where they didn't know as much about, or they didn't have the. Um, well, they didn't have they hadn't had the ultimate sacrifice. That, that calling out this burnt offering, I think, is 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 very specific here. Grant thee according to thine own heart. Uh, grant uh, grant thee according to the, uh, to thine own heart, and fulfill all thy counsel. Now, it culminates. Now we've left a help in time of trouble, and this is a uh, a a a prayer for the sustenance and the wisdom to move forward. The um, the the. New Testament model prayer that Jesus laid out for us has multitudes of verses about being delivered from temptation, praising of God, and a single verse dedicated to our fleshly needs. Give us this day our daily bread. And in this model prayer or 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 war chant or whatever you want whatever you want to ascribe to it, this verse here produces a, a similar singular line, grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill thy counsel. So not only is he saying well, we, you, you need, uh, I'm sure you've heard this saying, armies move on their stomach. Uh, it, gr- not only grant thee the strength and the physicality to carry on to the battle. Brother Kenny was, was talking to me right before his class last Tuesday about how the, the mission down at... Um, Paris is is really a one man show, and I watched my father go through the same thing, and it will be a one man show for a long time. And the ble- the blessing that you need to be praying for, that your wife needs to be praying for you for, that we need to be praying for you for, is that you have the strength to go the distance, to push the miles, and to get there. This is something that we should be all praying for ourselves. That we we would take, you know, when we pray over our food, a lot of times, it's, uh, bless me, Lord, Amen. Please don't let these calories stick to my ribs as, as bad as they have been, um, and and we move on. But we should be praying that those that the sustenance that we gain from our own food fuels us toward our work, toward the work of our God. The the consumption of food is not just is is not just supposed to be a and I think there's plenty of script, there's a, there's a marriage supper for a reason. This consumption of food is not just about fellowship and 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 enjoying time at the table. God recognizes those needs too. Why do you think He sent manna? Why do you think He sent? Why, why do you think after He sent manna and they got sick of that, He also sent them quail? Uh, uh, that, 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 that He doesn't. He does. That, God recognizes all that, but the the actual consumption of food is just fuel to keep moving, to keep going, to keep doing the things that we're supposed to do. Yes, it's a yes, it's a blessing to have, but we're supposed to be using that for something. It, 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 we're supposed to be looking two steps ahead and saying that this money, this food, this uh, the, uh, this opportunity is just a place for which I can exploit for the kingdom of God. That I can that I can use there, and then he goes on to say, and fulfill all thy counsel. Counsel is advice. Counsel is can be wisdom. <laughs> um, the the fervent prayer of our people is to be wise. I think when we we do our business meeting, as as, as slow as we move sometimes in getting business done. We try to do it with a thoughtful spirit about ourselves. We try to, we, because we understand, and I'm sure the ladies have gotten sick at times of waiting for us to do stuff, we understand, though, that the resources and things that the Lord has blessed us with are not to be squandered. And do we always make the right decisions? Certainly not. But our prayer is should be that that all of the counsel, all the wisdom that between between the handful of mostly southern country boys that don't have a whole lot of learning, is that we could come up with something that's glorifying to God. Amen. That the that 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 when we say these funds are going to be set aside for this, that that counsel is wise. That that counsel will be fulfilled. That that counsel is is what God wants us to do. And you think, well, that's just trivial. It's just, it's just money. No, that, that's, that's, that's God's money. That, that's money that we've set aside specifically. 
and said this is a tenth or more of all that we have put forth in our physical labors out there and we're setting it aside for the work here so that we can do things here. We will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of our God will we set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now, here, it almost, th this is where it starts beginning uh, um, among the earlier verses, too. This is where it starts sounding like a, uh, almost a, a, a battle cry, if, if you would, is where it says that we will rejoice in thy salvation, and in the name of our God will we set up our banners. Um, this is the, um, the place from which we are to offer praise. That we're that we're supposed to. Um, I'm trying to think of the word the, the word that I'm trying to think of here. Um, it'll come to me eventually. We set up, uh, and I'll just skip that. We 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 set up our. I think a, a lot of time we 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 parade around with a lot of banners with 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 no. No rejoicing and praise of God anywhere around them. Right. I'm sure Brother Ken's not doing this, but the mission down in Paris could be a feather in the hat. A large plume feather. At the ripe old age of 20, 21, 20? 21 and 2. 21 and two. I, I knew we were getting close. That's a large feather in the hat. The And I have received a lot of them. The accolades that I've received for our internet ministry. I try to take them as humbly as possible, but they can be, you can spread that peacock's tail just as wide as you want to. Brother Larry, you have years and years of ministry underneath your belt. Brother Jarrett, your articles are being seen by hundreds, if not thousands of people every week. These are large plumes that we could, we could wave around, but we have to remember what why we have these banners in the first place why and and what is a banner but ju but but a representation of hey what side are you on in battles why do you think they carry banners in the first place when these ancient medieval battles uh, where you had and and they didn't really need this many people eventually we figured out that you could just put like a squad or two among and they would fight that out and that'd be plenty eventually we'll just be fighting robots against each other but that's uh, that's that's in the future uh, but back in these times they sent thousands of people to the field and, and honestly, once you have a guy here, a guy here, a guy in front of you, a guy behind you, you can't see where you're going. You don't know, have, have any idea. You don't know whose who's lines you're fighting on. And in the heat of battle, when you're swinging your blade, and these armies, and they would clash together. The, they, they would, they would, they would, the front lines would co-mingle and just a, a, a bloodbath of blades and, and steel. And you would turn around and you would look for your fellows, and they're nowhere to be found. Why? Because you're about four men deep into the enemy army. So what, do you, what are the flags for? Well, you can look up and you say, that's the standard. That's where I need to be. This, this is the line. And a lot of times, that's, the, the, that's what the drum calls were for. That's what the trumpet calls were for. It was to realign yourself. To find, we have these banners. We have, the, we have, the, we have all these, the, these things that are, are glorifying to God, but we have to remember what they're for. We have to remember that, 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 that when... Brother Kim, when you go down there to uh, to uh, to to Paris, why are you there? Why are we doing this? What does that represent? What responsibility has been set before me? As is, it's very. It was it, a a standard bearer, although they didn't do a lot of fighting. Very very important job. Because it was from that place that every every other thing rallied to. You're not going to get the most kills. You're not going to get the. You're not going to probably get the glory. But when the battle gets hot, we know where we stand. Remember that these things that we're doing, that 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 these that these works are doing, are not just something that we can glorify in ourselves. And I think that's what he's saying. We will rejoice in thy salvation. In the name of our God, will we set up banners? When we say this is the line in the sand for which we will draw, and we stick that flag there, everybody seen that Iwo Jima statue where it's got all the soldiers trying to place the American flag up? 
and we stick this in the ground and say, hey, this is, this in, here in Paris or here on the Internet or here in Dover, Tennessee is where we shall draw the line, none shall pass, that we don't look up and say, look at what we've done. Look how hard we've worked. And it's very, very, very easy to do. Why? Because we like to be patted on the back. We love to be patted on the back. Being patted on the back is the best. Why? Because it, it, it glorifies one and only person, you. It feels good. When all of our accolades, when all when when, when and 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 all of our all of our praise should be directed to the one from whence it all all the power flows from anyway. From whence all the blessings descend. Now, now, uh, now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the, with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Now, verse, verse 6, he says, Now I know that the Lord saveth his anointed. This is... Nothing has changed from verse 1 where he's saying, well, I hope the Lord hears you whenever you call for help between you know, verse 1 and verse 2 to verse 6. No, the, the situation has not changed. Stating that now I know that the, that the Lord saveth his anointed is an act of trust, an act of faith. I have placed my petition at the feet of God, and I'm going to leave it there. And trust, without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord will take care of this situation, that he will, pl- that he will do all in his- that is necessary to heed my petition. That kind of faith, though, does not descend from a wayward walk from the Lord. That kind- You're not going to gain the confidence to pray a prayer and know that the Lord is going to take care of it by, first of all, never testing that faith, and, se- and second of all, never being close enough to know that even He heard you in the first place. And then verse 7 says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. And you could say, and, and it's e- you could very quickly minimize this verse down to, uh, you know, some people place their trust in, in, in physical weapons of warfare, but we're going to trust in God. That is very true. But the calling of chariots and horses is actually kind of specific to the time period. Chariots were being manufactured and were the backbone of the Egyptian army about this time. Horses some of the earliest Middle Eastern uh, horse riders and, and cavalry aficionados were none other than the Assyrians. And these two different nations always, always at enmity with God. Well, I say always. The Assyrians did have uh, the, the Nineveh revival that, uh, that took place. Uh, but, uh, but these were enemies of God's people. So calling them out was not just it was not just saying that well, well some people trust in in these machines of war the strength of of really the battle tank and uh, the 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 the, uh, the lightweight inf- infantry of the time. No, this this was saying some people can trust in well look at Egypt. What did Egypt offer? Well, Egypt offered every comfort and pleasure of the flesh that you can imagine. What did Egypt? What was the price of that offering? Well. In Exodus, when they started grumbling against Moses and said, well, we had leeks and garlics back, we were back in Egypt, what were they saying? They said, we'd rather be a slave and comfortable than free and serve God. And the Assyrians, on the other hand, masters of torture. The Assyrians would walk up to a city, and before they got a mile off, the city would surrender to them. You want to know why? Well, the Assyrians blinded people when they got there. They would fillet their victims alive and hang their skin from their walls. They would impale their victims on spikes, cut off limbs. 
they were a terror, extreme terror, psychological warfare fighting with the, with the Assyrians. You literally had cities surrender, walled cities surrender before they ever got close because nobody wanted that. In fact, their impaling methods were so extreme and so awful that Vlad of Europe would eventually adopt those on thousands of Ottomans, and later his exploits would be uh, uh, immortalized in a book by Bram Stoker called Dracula. These are horrible people. You have the pleasures of slavery and flesh and the fear of destruction, ultimate painful destruction on every side, and the people of God are to say, what? I'm going to remember the name of the Lord God. We're going to stand and fight. When, all other th- when, 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 when ultimate comfort is offered, if you will just but bow, if you will but kneel, what was the offer of Lucifer to Jesus? If you will just bow before me, everything that you see can be yours. And it would have been that easy. Jesus could could have not decided to walk that path, and everything in the world would have fell at his feet. That was within Lucifer's ability. This is his home territory. This is his home turf. And so much easier. And we're offered the same thing every day. It, it would be, you, you, hey, you want to know how you can get about a, a half dozen people more come there? Just start offering fun time. Offer wild music and, 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 riot, and, and riotousness. And you can live however you want to and everything will be all right. And people will come in droves because it's easier to be a slave and live sumptuously than to serve God and sometimes have to go pick bread up off the ground. <laughs> On the other hand, sometimes the world will intimidate you. If you don't stop, some bad things are going to happen. They're going to do like the Assyrians, and they'll say, you think you have it rough now. Wait till we start peeling you. You think you got it rough now. Wait till the, the screams and cries of your children reach your ears. And that also something the, the Assyrians would do, burn children alive in front of their parents. Why? Intimidation, fear, roll over. Very easy. You know, all those cities that surrendered, none of those bad things happened to them. So if I can intimidate you, if I can come up, I can bow up, say, what are you going to do about it? It's real easy to say, hey, man, we're just, we're just trying to have a, a little church service here. What, what would you like us to preach? What would be, what would be um, uh, easiest uh, and most palatable for people? Would you prefer that we said homosexuality is, is A-OK? Will that get my son out of jail? It's so much easier to go that way than to say, no, we're doing it God's way. And if it comes down to friend and family and wife and child to be sacrificed, or even my own head, so be it. There's a, there are numerous books of people that have been given that choice and had to make it. Countless bloody slaughters of Christians to make that very, very same choice. And you think that that, that's not coming? Oh, eventually it will. We've had it cushy for too long. And this is the worst part with the cushy lifestyle that we've had. We've done nothing with it. In fact, we've let everything lapse. And God's real specific about chastisement, real specific. And if you can't, if you can't make, uh, if you can't make bread while there's flour to make it, He'll see what it's like whenever you ain't get nothing but cornmeal. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord, let the King hear us when we call. Now, verse 8 says, they are brought down and fallen. The confidence. Verse 7 is a decision. Verse 8 is God's blessing of that decision. 
you can roll over and play dead. You can, when, when the world says jump, you can ask how high. And that is a path that you can take and that you and God alone can square with one, one another. I think there's numerous places in the scripture that will tell you how he will square that with you. But you go ahead and do that. Or you can make the hard decision. Now, is God always going to bless with, oh, and they were cast down with thunder and lightning? No. Uh, a, lot of them, a lot of the stories are going to end like this, where you're going to receive the beating, you're going to end up in jail, and one person, and his, maybe his family, will be saved, and he'll wash the bleeding, oozing stripes on your back. But, but to Paul and Silas, it was all worth it. Every scorching, painful lash was worth it. Save, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. Now, he, they, are, they are now requesting aid for themselves. We've been talking a lot about requesting aid for other people, praying for other people, blessing other people. Now we're talking about save, Lord, that is un understood you there. Who, who wants to be saved? You want to be saved. Let the king, this is lowercase k, hear us when we call. Now, the, when we request aid, and, and, and I think specifically here, talking, when we need help from David, we want him to be able to hear us and come, at our, and come to our aid. And David did as often as he could. But I think this could be turned and made into a, a spiritual we can pray for our brothers and sisters we can ask them for aid and we should we should pray for each and every single one of us here why so that when we need help I can turn to brother junior and sister Ian not only as their grandson but say I am in need of some spiritual aid fight with me and they can come they can rally to me why because they're already blessed I've been praying for them. Brother Larry's been praying for them. Brother Ken's been praying for them. And in turn, when I need aid, they turn and say, we're spiritually equipped and ready. And not only ready, we have our swords sharpened. Let's go to war. We have to come together, people. We're, we're, we're so disseparate and we're so willing to allow our brothers and sisters to fall on their own blades. And then stand back and say, well, I guess they weren't one of God's anyway. And, and spiritually justify our, to ourselves why we didn't aid them in the first place. Pray for one another. Pray for yourself. There, there, and again, in verse 1, there is an implication of self-prayer. I pray... It basically, if if you wanted to translate, if you wanted if you wanted to pull meaning out of verse one, I pray that Brother Larry, when he when he prays for help, that he gets the help he needs. So pray for yourself. But then after you're done with your and and a lot of times it can turn into it, after you're done with your own pity party, turn and pray for some of these people around you because they are the strength of the army. I've to, I've said I've made the analogy multiple times. The church is like an ancient Roman phalanx. And you know what? The phalanx was powerful. Why? Because it was a wall of solid steel and spikes out the front of it. And it, But it only lasted as long as everybody stayed up. One person goes down and there's a hole and people will exploit that hole. I'm going to pray for Brother Larry. I'm going to pray for Brother Ken. I'm going to pray for Sister Abigail. I'm going to pray for Brother Jared. And I'm going to pray for everybody in this church. That way the guy next to me doesn't drop and I'm exposed. That sounds kind of selfish, but if we're very selfish people, and if that's, the mo if that's the most spiritually you can get with it, pray for one another. It's valuable. Questions or comments on chapter 20? Um, when you talk about the sanctuary and, and how we can meet with God anywhere, but he's appointed a specific place. In theology, we, we, we call that the ordinary means of grace. And by that, you know... Uh, that there's nothing meritorious, there's no grace in anything we do in and of itself. However, God has given us certain things where he essentially says, do this because through this I administer grace to my people. Mm -hmm. And we recognize preaching, prayer, baptism, the Lord's Supper. Um, it's not that you can't be saved if you don't do those things, but those are things that God uses to administer grace to his people. And so it's... it's uh, uh, it's 
kind of like anything. It's like why would you why would you go seek your own way to do something when there's already a clear direct way of doing it? And most of the time it comes down to a broad path or a narrow path. Sure. Which is easier to slip down and follow? Sure. People are like water. Water always chooses the path of least resistance always. Anybody else? Questions, comments? If not, you are dismissed, and we will get into Psalms 21 next week.